I have watched but, the first episode of, of Dan to Dan. Um, and uh, the only positive thing I can say about the anime is that the grandma is just as hot in the anime as she is in the manga. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, yo, this gilf, hey, though. Hey, yo, this gilf, <laughs> though. What? Hello everyone, it is that time of the month again, time for Anime Club After Dark to pop a squad and hit you with all the best and worst of what we have been indulging in recently. I'm your host Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight I have our czar of source material, John. I just, I'm, I can't get the freaking Dan to Dan OP out of my head now, because we were just talking about it. Well no, like the good part where it's like, Dan to Dan, Dan to Dan, Dan to Dan, Dan to Dan, Dan to Dan. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm like, that part is great. I love that part. I hate when Creepy Nuts raps, dude. I, <laughs> I, I this don't hate the, in you. I, I don't hate the band or anything. I don't think they make bad music, but I just, whenever they rap, I'm just, I have thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we, we also have our impatient watcher, Chinoda. Hello, I'm tired. I did yeah, well, some stuff today. It, it's funny because we have Chinoda here who's tired. We have John here who's sick. <laughs> Just a little bit ill. I'm the only one is I guess is feeling good right now and energetic. Um, but hey, since we've already brought it up, let's talk about Dan to Dan <laughs> for um, our first I, thing that we're going to talk about. I only watched clips of it. I still haven't watched the anime. Like I've seen the OP, um, and I've seen clips from the show. Mm-hmm. But like I said. I've read the manga again. I've I've gotten uh, whatever to chapter thirty two or whatever, and I, I you think know the, the general story. Whatever. Well, I know the general story. Yeah, I'm way more further ahead than people watching the anime currently. <laughs> yeah, for content Much wise, further. I have watched but, the first episode of of Dan to Dan. Um, and uh, the only positive thing I can say about the anime is that the grandma is just as hot in the anime as she is in the manga. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> hey yo, this gilf hey, though. Yo, this gilf <laughs> though. What? What is that it? was the one thing I was looking forward to for the anime. And I was like, I wasn't gonna say nothing because I wanted you guys to be surprised by the gilf. Like, hey yo, it's basically just uh, she looks exactly like Bayonetta, and I'm like, <laughs> let's fucking go. What is it like? Like older women are in demand right now, man. Like, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Man. Listen, I, I've been I've been a fan of older women my entire life, so like this is nothing new to me. But I'm glad you all are joining the club, like in realizing <laughs> how wonderful older women can be. Like I said it like five years ago on the podcast. She's not live anymore, unfortunately. R.I.P. But Betty White would. <laughs> oh, oh God. Man, uh, Alex is uh, drinking whatever Ben Franklin was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I'm just saying, older women, older women is where it's at, man. I mean, they know what they want, and they don't bullshit about it. But yeah, the uh, I love it. The gilf in Dan to Dan is like just it's perfection. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hot take about Dan to Dan, or like th- I think it's a hot take. Okay. I, so I, I the the music in the OP is fine. It's like it's creepy nuts. You know they have their their style. Whether you like it or you don't like it, it it's it's them obviously doing the music. Um, <clears throat> I am not a huge fan of the visuals in the OP, um, which is weird because I think the visuals in the OP are pretty great. <laughs> see, but yeah, so same. do I you really know what like it reminds it. me of? It, you, have you ever gone on YouTube and seen these people that re-upload like um, either clips of anime or OPs and EDs that are yeah. AI upscaled to sixty frames per second? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Oh, and those yeah, OPs right. and shit, those AI upscaled shit, looks like ass. <laughs> yeah, because like, was it inter interpolating? Interpolating? It's interpolating frames. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like dog shit. <laughs> but that's that's the feeling I get from watching this OP with like, and it, it goes to show that like, for me at least, I've always said that smooth animation does not equal good animation. There's a reason that like, movies and well, anime in particular is at 24 frames per second or less. Like, it works. I don't know. It just looks like something that's been AI upscaled to 60 frames per second. That's and that's why I just don't like the visuals. No, I can I see what you mean. It does look a little bit weird. I I still think it looks good, but like I can understand where you're coming from hmm. for that. I don't necessarily think the visuals are bad. It's just very distracting. Okay. To me. And 
have you been watching are you like up to date on dan dan like i think it's around episode what three no i've only watched yeah. the first episode myself okay i still but i am a, i am aware episode, of the granny but... the granny gilf <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been watching. I watched the first three episodes like what a month ago. Oh yeah, yeah, it was yeah in theaters. Let's go. Yeah, yeah the, this <laughs> dude went and paid money to watch something he could watch for free. <laughs> well, head up, everyone. Yeah, I I don't know if it's a hot take to say that Dan Dan's like I I think it's overhyped for sure. I think that the uh the vocality of the people who are looking forward to Dan Dan. Dan has been blown out of proportion. I don't think it's that dis- good of a show. Um, mm. It's animated smoothly. Like, it's good frames. But, like I said, the actual story itself is kind of just meh. Uh, and outside mm-hmm. of, like, having a lot of weird fucking anime ass shots of teenagers in high schools, like, that that's the only thing that's, like, that makes me go, wow, that that's pretty crazy. Like, oh, that's... I, I mean, they're, they're high schoolers... I don't know if I should be praising that, that I get to see their panties all the damn time, and you know the implied uh, gangbang rape stuff that's happening here. I don't, uh, I don't know about that. She's sixteen, bro. Calm down. Yeah, yeah I'm completely passing over that and saying <laughs> I really like the uh, characters themselves and how much they bounce off of each other. I fucking love that, and that's what I'm mostly here for. Like the crazy <clears throat> bullshit. Hell yeah, great time, let's go. But the characters themselves being complete, utter idiots and just bouncing off of each other, love that shit. Give me more. um, That's what I feel like the appeal of this is going to end up being for me if, you know, I actually end up following through and watching all of it, is that it's going to have to carry itself on the character interactions because the story so far is just kind of, eh. But if you got great character interactions and great character development, then sure, I'll watch it. Even if the yeah, story itself I mean, is kind of weird and out there. If I have nothing else to read, I'll continue to read Dan Dan. Hmm. Maybe it gets better. Because <laughs> I, I think it's like at chapter like 90 something or 100 and something now. So I've got a lot more to read. <laughs> yeah. But so far, I, I think it's just mid. Which is, again, I maybe it's a hot take. I don't know. I'm not I sure how it. big the reception for Dan Dan has been. On Mal, it's the most watched thing this season. There is currently okay. 290,000 yeah, people saying they're watching it. Okay. It's hugely popular. Yeah. <clears throat> At least for this season. Um, yeah. It is. Um, I guess we can move on if we got nothing else to say. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, yeah. All right. Just before we started recording, I watched Demon Lord 2099, and I had no idea going into this there would be a whole live cameo. I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I I also TMT watched... herself. <laughs> yeah, Toa Sama Maji Tenshi literally mm. shows up, and I thought it, when you showed that, I thought it was just like a, a fun little like screen cap of like that happened in the background for like one or two frames. It's like yeah. no, they're literally playing the live stream. Yeah, <laughs> while the characters are conversing, and I'm like, yo, and yeah, you can hear her. She's you can hear her talking. Anime. Yeah, you can hear her talking. And in, in the in the bottom left, there's an image of the whole live uh, Indonesia Gen Two girls. <laughs> Yeah, so I was like, that's really funny. I like, I, I don't know why was that there. Like, I get that Toa is supposed to be a demon, so it's like, oh, yeah. we're it's and the it, demon lord of the future, so we're gonna watch VTubers because they'll be here brand. in the future. <laughs> yeah, it's on brand, but I'm like, are are they just fans of Toa? Like, I don't, I, 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 I don't know. That, like, but this Ari implies Forta, that she's this implies that she's never going to graduate, and she will be doing this until she's an actual Obachan. <laughs> well, she's an angel, so she'll never age. But um, yeah, I, I know that Ari Furita, Furita uh, in season two, they had like a Pekra lookalike. Yeah, it, cover it literally was, like, was uh, Pekra. No, please. Yeah, and then cover was like, uh, "Hey, can you guys not?" So then they had to take it out. And yeah, for the blue release, that, they ended up I editing it out. Karone also voiced a character in Yokai Watch because she's a big fan of Yokai Watch. Mm-hmm. She she's that one chick that like is eating rice or whatever it is and the, the yokai crashes through her room and it's like oh my god my food and it's like ah corona's in an anime that's funny <laughs> uh, i have but- to imagine this was like planned out it wasn't something like the arafuerta thing where 
it was, it was so just close a fan to Pekora. No, I think no. it, I think it was just someone because that character in Aria Fuerta is not like a main character. It's just a background. No, character no that background character for... that literally is just Pekora. Like same hair, yeah. same yeah. um rabbit like <laughs> scarf. Yeah, so but it was, that stuff. was easy enough to edit out, like for the Blu-ray yeah. release. But um, like Toa's on screen in this for several seconds, like voicing stuff, and I'm like, okay, yeah, this she's had to there be for planned. like a good thirty seconds. You can just hear her talking. Yeah. I'm like, did they buy this? Like, did they have to pay money for the rights to put this in their anime? I don't understand either, what's happening here. Either they Land did that partnership. Um, yeah, either Maybe. they did that or it was just a, like a, a written or agreed on contracted partnership where it's like, hey, we're seeing this as advertisement for Whole Alive, I guess. I mean, like, you know, the Clips channels have that sort of agreement in, in place. I mean. So, yeah, Demon Lord 2099. Um, I I actually kind of like it. Uh, I li- I've, I've only, seen, only watched the first there's episode. There's only an episode out right now, but. Yeah. But so far, I'm, I'm kind of like digging it. I I, I thought I it mean, was going to be more of a fish out of water story, and it may still end up being that to a degree. But I like the <laughs> cyberpunk aesthetic. I really do. Well, first when of I all, when I first saw um, that, I was just like, "Yo, this is forget. dope." <laughs> the the demon lord is voiced by uh, Ainz himself, yeah. Sasuga. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, a ten out of ten. Toa is in here. Ainz is uh, the main VA. I'm I'm here for this. I'm I'm going to watch this now. But yeah. um. Yeah, I mean, there have been plenty of Demon Lords go, like, reincarnate 500 years later in the future or whatever animes mm. out there. Uh, there's actually one, one almost every season, not going to lie. It seems like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. It's been about one every season or every other season uh, for the last couple years. There's always one where it's, like, fish out of water, Demon Lord type of shit. Uh, yeah. And most oh, of them are, like... right shit. Most of them are pretty funny. Uh, like, yeah. you know... Demon Lord I mean, fish out of work. water stories can be pretty funny. Well, yeah, like Demon Lord at Work was pretty funny, and then season two just bungles it all. But yeah. we, we don't talk about that one. But uh, a lot of them is usually like the Demon Lord is OP, um, or they're just a fish out of water, and it's just a funny situation where they can't use their powers for whatever reason. Yeah. But in this one, it's actually like, you no, know, he goes to the future, and as it turns out, uh, the Demon Lord world and also Earth collided. So magic and technology combined, and yeah. now this demon lord is like a relic of the past. It's like you used to be super strong, and you could you were one of the faster fastest casters alive, which is why you were made such a threat. But we've used technology to trump you, and it's like, yeah. oh shit, how is he going to get yeah, through? It's very I, interesting. Yeah, yeah I like, like how oh, man, in this world there's like a there's like a detailed process for how magic has to be cast, and then like yeah, they, it's hard they've magic. In, they've invented technology that like speeds that along, and I'm like, yeah. that's actually pretty cool because they have. They, like the merger between how magic and technology are used in this world actually seems something that's going to be interesting to explore. So I will say they did explicitly say they did have magic tech already in their world, but uh, the advanced technology in ours only sped Expedited it up it, yeah. so but, yeah. much more. It yeah. sped yeah. up the it's development like, of it. In the old world, they had magic tools where they could like you know put power into things, sure, but they couldn't do advanced shit like. I added AI to the circuitry of this so it yeah. could actually handle casting the three steps for you. So you just have to think about the magic you want to use and control your output. And then you can just use magic. And it's like, oh, shit. So basically everything that the Demon Lord could do, everyone can do now. And it's like, yeah. oh, shit. He's so now he's at spot. the bottom of the totem pole, basically. Yeah, so it's like, so where is, it, where is this going to go? And I'm like, it's kind of interesting. Plus, I like the music a lot. It's... Yeah, the music in it was yeah, pretty good. I like that. I, um... There's a the scene in it where he's like facing the boss dude of the one company, and there's like that guitar oh, yeah. riff that that guitar riff that comes in when he does the magic, the seal block or the spell blocker. But like, that's pretty cool. A little guitar riff. I was like, please bring that back. No. Also, the um, the like the Chuni hacker girl that they introduced. I like her a lot. I hope we get to see her. <laughs> <It's> again. <China laughs> dress. You're being blinded I by want the China a lot dress. More. <laughs> I want more of this this hacker girl that put porn on all the screens. She's hilarious. I love it. I'm yeah. very much looking forward to more I'm, of this yeah, uh, show. I was I was pleasantly surprised with the first episode of this. There's only one episode out now as of the time of recording this, but I am looking forward to seeing where this one goes. Um, not as much of a fish out of water story as I thought it was going to be because I thought it was going to lean more toward the like the comedy uh, mm-hmm. of it. But I'm I'm pleasantly surprised that it's going to lean more toward like the actual serious side of this. 
Okay. It seems like there is a little bit of comedy, but more you can just laugh at it yourself instead yeah. of, hey, we're presenting this as funny. Like the the Hacker Girls, I guess, meant to be a little bit of comic relief. Yeah. But yeah, it, it seems more like a serious story than a funny story because, like. No, it is. It is. Uh, it's just the, I'm just saying. The, the trailer that I saw for it made it seem like it was going to be more com- uh, comedy centered. It, it, it might still turn out like that. Who knows? It, it may. Because... It may. There's only one we episode, so I don't have much yeah. to judge it on. But yeah, that's I mean, Demon Lord 2099. Check it out. I it so far I'm 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 liking it. Uh, speaking of Demon Lords, Demon <laughs> Lord Retry is out. Uh, this is the second season of Demon Lord. That animation uh, though. <laughs> so there's this. It's a different studio. Um, I don't I think, think it looks that bad, honestly. I don't think it looks that bad. I think it it, it definitely looks better different. in terms of uh, well, it looks way more different. Like the character designs are completely different, um, like majorly different. Like Mikan and Yuki Kaze completely look different. They don't look like the same characters at all. Uh, the Demon Lord himself, the main character guy, he looks actually like older Hakuto. He looks a lot older than the like in the original first season. But, yeah, uh, if I remember reading right, uh, he actually looks a lot more like what he's supposed to. Yeah, so the uh, Demon Lord Retry R is what the second season of Demon Lord Retry is based on, which is the reimagination or the continuation of the manga or whatever it is. Like oh. It goes to a different thing. I don't remember why it goes from Demon Lord Retry to Demon Lord Retry R, but... Uh, the second season supposedly said it was based on the, the Demon Lord Retry R, which is the second series. And it has a completely different studio. I think that they're trying too hard with the sound design in Demon Lord Retry, the second season. Uh, they kind of just, like, throw it in anywhere and everywhere, excessively. Just blowing out my eardrums. I'm like, mm, you know, I get that you want to show off your sound, but... It's a little much, you know. It, it feels like they're over overcompensating for a lot of stuff, uh, and the pacing of it is completely off because, yeah, they kind of have to do a TLD. Like the first two episodes were just basically a TLDR of like, all right, so basically this is what's happened since the last time you've seen us, and they're kind of yada yadying over a lot of shit, which is what Demon Lord Retry R does in the beginning because it's like, hey, to catch you guys back up to speed about what happened in Demon Lord Retry. It's kind of like, yeah, this is kind of the growing pains of doing a continuation <laughs> or a, a sequel continuation. So, I I mean, I don't think it's completely terrible. Uh, I think the animations that they have for the ED look really good. I'm like, whoa, look at these beautiful, looks like um, animations or, or not an, illustrations done for like the light novel. Like it, it looks like that type of professional. I'm like, that looks pretty good. Why couldn't you guys just do that the entire time? But whatever. <laughs> the budget, John. The budget. That's <laughs> yeah, <why>. the budget. <laughs> budget. I, I still Money. like it overall, though, I will say. And I'm looking forward to more. And the the, the femboy. Just Yuki give me Kaze? More. Give yeah. Me, give me he... more Yuki Kaze. I love him. I love him so much. So I... horny. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, please, Osan, let me suck on your popsicle and it's like here you go but it gives him an actual popsicle and it's just like what the fuck <laughs> just all the lewd things he says it's yeah. so adorable so adorable <sighs> jesus christ i completely forgot about uh yuki kaze just being there for the majority of this uh first couple episodes yuki kaze is gonna be there because i thought i thought uh, you were gonna even... say i just completely forgot how degenerate Jinoda is <laughs> no 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 i forgot about yuki kaze. <laughs> that's rent free <laughs> yeah, you know, I know how degenerate he is. But yeah, I you know, overall I don't think it's terrible. Um I think that it is definitely a tonal shift. Just it's growing pains, just let it ride it out. Uh specifically the arc that this is gonna cover with like the um with Eagle, I think is a really good arc, especially for uh I think it's her name is Luna. It's about Luna and Eagle. Like you can see it in the OP and the E D, like what this this arc is going to be about, and I think it's a pretty good arc. So, give it a shot. I'm still waiting. Like I, I'm not. I don't terribly hate it, but I do ask. Um, 
please rein back this the sound design. <laughs> please just rein it back. <laughs> just a little bit. Isn't that bit, distracting? Please. It just bothers it's, me. It's not great. It it's like, you know, the it's a f- effective use of sound design sometimes means the absence of noise, okay? Yeah. It's knowing sometimes. when to use it for how long to use it. Yeah, it's the not exact just constantly same, blaring it. It's the exact same concept as sometimes the best dialogue is silence. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Unfortunate that it's that uh distracting though. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's just not great. <laughs> yeah. It's just not great. All right, what's next? Uh, I will do something that's non anime. Um the Legend of Fox Machina. Uh all right, well this is the part where I gotta throw some shit back in your face because if I did this, you'd be complaining like a motherfucker right now, so fuck you. What? Anyway, yeah, well, fuck you. Um, that he's talking about non-anime stuff for a monthly dump? Yeah, because he gets on to me when I do it. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought it was Natai that was getting on your case for bringing up stuff. Wasn't it? No, I, was it, it you, Chinoda? Was me. No, Natai oh, okay. may have done it too, but I think Chinoda's definitely done it. I mean, yeah. it's just kind of whatever. <laughs> no, Natai says Talking about what should... we've been watching, reading, playing, etc., sharing any hot takes. Like, that's, yeah. that's what the monthly dump is. Like, hey, we are an anime podcast, and... Uh, we also read and watch a bunch of stuff, and we can just talk about it. Yeah. I mean, John talks anyway. about manga on here all the time, too. All the time. Yeah. I'd love to talk about Demon Slayer, but <laughs> that's still... Uh, the anime hasn't finished, and I don't want to spoil anything. Soon anyway. enough. Anyway, it's um, on, Shinoda. Legend of Walks Machina. It is animated, so technically... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so what is... The latest season... Yeah, what is Vox ahead. Machina? You said it earlier. You told me in the um, when we were before we started recording, it's like the Matt Mercer thing. Uh, so it's it's an animated show. It's I thought it was a YouTube thing. Is it not? No, it's an animated show. Uh, okay, from Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon oh, okay. Prime. Yeah, they basically uh, I don't know all the details themselves, but from what I've gathered, they basically took one of the campaigns and made it into a show. Oh, and okay. that, yeah, they that's took, it. Yeah, it took a D and D campaign that Matt Mercer does with a bunch of other of his friends and fellow voice actors. Um, they now that is on YouTube. That the uh, campaigns are put on YouTube. Okay, now yeah. this is just cheating because you have his fellow professional voice actors. <laughs> they, they're <laughs> professional voice actors, like, and they <laughs> did this campaign. Like, this is just cheating, dude. <laughs> I mean, that's just getting paid for your hobbies, isn't it? <laughs> like, what the pretty fuck? much, yeah. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool, and, like, I love the show itself, so, hell yeah. And it's pretty damn popular, considering this is, uh, the third season of it? Yeah. People freaking love this shit. Um, <laughs> it's pretty good, it's a fun time, uh, it's got a evolving story, and, like, overall narrative from what we can see. I'm, I'm just like, yeah, I love this shit, I love all the characters, I love the villains, like, good stuff. Yeah, I've heard some good stuff about it, especially from people who already love the watching the D and D campaigns on YouTube. Um, I will probably never watch it. <laughs> I mean, it's like, recommended it a lot of uh, Legends of Avantress on YouTube Shorts. The hell is that? Legends of Avantress, <laughs> different D and D playing group, and it's oh. like it's, it's it's a lot more comedy and stuff. They have like a their YouTube channel, their videos and stuff don't do very well. Like it's like maybe. 50,000, 75,000 views at most. But their shorts like hit millions cuz man, there's just, like, I would like to be moments. doing I would like to be doing that not well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I meant like in terms of when you think big YouTube D&D group, we all think of Critical Role, right? We did like yeah. we all think of um Oh my god, what's the one with Brandon in them? The college dropout guys or college humor guys. Um, oh, um. Oh my god, they have one too. Roll 20? Dimension 20. Dimension 20. Is that That's, it? I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, Dimension I 20 is another um pretty. Po- they have their own, I believe, streaming network and stuff where you can watch them online. They're pretty popular too. I like their D&D campaigns too. <laughs> hmm. 
I like watching because I don't have friends to content continually play D and D campaigns with. I have to watch other people play D and D campaigns. <laughs> live vicariously through them. You gotta live vicariously. Oh. Uh. A little sad thing about it is um, Lance Riddick is the main bad guy in Vox Machina. He plays oh. this. Uh, oh, that's sad. Uh, big, big bad uh, endgame uh, dragon uh, named Thordak. And I'm just like, oh, hearing your voice. How are they going to handle that? Even after long. I don't know. I genuinely don't. I don't even know if they finished. Uh, recording his uh, lines for the season so i don't know what's what's going to happen but still i was just i'm just like yo sad moment <laughs> yeah you know it's like situations like this where i'm like i would ask the the family like can we reuse all of their voice lines and into an like, ai compiler yeah to like put in into to to finish things like this like this is the only yeah. time i'd be like yeah it's fine to do that Obviously, or, ask for or, permission first. Or you could find a, another voice actor who's good at maybe mimicking the voice. No, or doing something get, close. <laughs> just get Keith David to re replace Lance. Exactly. It's fine. Just give Keith David. I mean, It'll be fine. That's pretty yes. much what happened with that, a whole bunch of other stuff. That's well, that's what happened in Destiny. That's that's the joke I'm making here. Yeah. Lance Reddick got replaced by Keith David, and I'm like, this is like the worst. I hate this. I love Keith David. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but it is completely different doing like strikes and shit where it's like vuvuzela is talking to me and i'm like oh that's lance riddick and then doing the new uh strikes and it's like oh that's keith david <laughs> it's so <laughs> jarring <laughs> uh but yeah that's cool i mean I've, I've never seen vox machina so i didn't even know what it i've never heard of it so i think you would genuinely enjoy it because it, it's it's a D, D uh campaign but yeah with like i i, same I mean i like shit. I like Legends of Avantress, I like Critical Role, and I like Dimension 20, so I there's no reason I wouldn't like Vox Machina then, especially yeah, I since feel it's like the, the Critical Role people doing it. So. I feel like if you're a big fan of D&D, &D and especially watching D&D &D campaigns, you probably would like it. And they put some serious Amazon money into the animation. It looks nice. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Well, Alex? Uh, Moving on, um, I want to talk about a negaposi angler or negative positive angler. Um, when I did the uh, season preview for fall, I said that this has the potential for being uh, a sleeper hit. I still stand by that after watching the first episode. Uh, I kind of like this. It starts out like I described as a dude, a college student, who um, is in some serious debt. Um, he's got debt collectors coming after him. And uh, finds out from a doctor that he had... They never actually say what it is in the show. Um, at least they haven't yet. Uh, but it looks like cancer. Um, um, and the doctor I says always that, call it... <laughs> so in, in like K-drama, there's always some like terminal illness like yeah. disease. Uh, in SAO, that one chick had a terminal illness disease. I call it super mega cancer AIDS. <laughs> super mega cancer AIDS, yeah. <laughs> it's just super, super mega cancer AIDS. That's, that's what it is. Some mysterious sure. disease that's gonna kill you. Uh, sure, we'll, we'll we'll go with that. Um, he had super mega cancer AIDS, um, and uh, finds out from the doctor he has a prognosis of maybe living at the outset two years, um, mm -hmm. without treatment. Um, and uh, while he's on the run from these debt collectors, he ends up running into a group of people who are just fishing on a breakwater, which, uh, by the way, don't do this. In most places around the world, this is illegal. Um, it's definitely illegal in Japan because they have a fucking disclaimer that comes up and says, don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, only fish in places where it is legal. Um, I know here, I can't speak for everywhere, but I know here in Florida, fishing on breakwaters is illegal. Um but um, but why is it illegal, Alex? Are you I, telling me the government's regulating this for my safety? Listen. Is it you, because if you sure. fish in breakwaters, you could actually get seriously injured or fucking get swept out into the water and drown and die? No way. Sure, it will be. I don't know, man. The government's lying to you. That's yeah. where all the good fishing goes. So that's why they don't want us to actually fish. <laughs> the government so. wants those fish for themselves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they fish out there. <laughs> 
Uh, but now the the dude, uh, the main character dude, um, his name is what the hell is his name? Uh, Sune Hero. They all all the other people he meets call him Hero, um, which he's really weirded out by because like you just meet these people and they give you a nickname. <laughs> um, and that's more of a cultural thing, right? Like in Japan, yeah. you don't you don't just automatically nickname people unless you're friends or you're close. Yeah, and they all other, insist so. on yeah. calling him by his first name as well, which is also a cultural thing in Japan. Like, you don't call someone by their first name on first meeting them. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of like how friendly Islander people are, right? Like, they're so yeah. laid back, and it's just like, we're on the island. Like, there's a reason why it's called on island time, all right? Yeah. Because life is about living, not, a, which not about, is- like... Is kind of how the group that he meets that are doing this fishing are kind of portrayed, like these very laid back, kind of go with the flow type people. Yeah. Um, and like the whole thing looks like it's going to be him learning how to basically be happy in his life by learning to fish with these people. And learning how so to like take it. life in strides and like yeah, you know, because he's like at the outset he's it. super depressed, he's super sad. Of course, he's in debt, so he's got debt collectors coming after him, so he's constantly anxious about that. Um, but I, I feel like it's going to be a really cool, like found family kind of thing because he's also seems like someone who's not got any like living relatives or anything that he can rely on. Um, and also the, the twist at the end of the first episode is he goes back to his apartment. It's been torn down. So now he has nowhere to live on top of all this too. Yeah, oh. so now he's homeless on top of all this. It's also revealed at the end of the first episode that the reason these people, these fishers that he found are all even together in the first place, because it's it's quite a ragtag bunch. They don't seem to have much in common. They all work at the same convenience store. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I completely understand that. <laughs> yeah. And they all just hang out together when they're not working, going fishing, and they sell their fish to make extra money. Who the fuck wants to hang out with their coworkers? Listen, I sometimes, you, sometimes <laughs> you work with people that are actually cool. I worked at a place where all my coworkers were pretty Sometimes cool. you have shared hobbies with coworkers. Like, yeah. it, it, it's fine, dude. Look, um, I get that and all, but, like, eight hours a day. I don't have to see you after that. <laughs> but, yeah, like I said during the season preview, I, I'm still kind of thinking this might be a sleeper hit uh, of, of the season. Also, I Farouz is in this, so please check it out. <laughs> She's in a lot of shows this season. She's in, like, three or four different things this season, at least. What a champ. Um, because she is the main, like, uh, female character in this uh, in this anime. Um, seems like she might end up being a love interest, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, okay. I will say one negative thing I can point to in this is there is um, a bit of CG um, with the fish, and it's very noticeable. <laughs> In a good uh, way or a bad way? In a Sounds comedic bad. way. <laughs> in a comedic oh. way. Um, oh, that's Like, great. for example, there's a scene where the, our main guy catches a fish for the first time. This is also completely new to him. He's never fished any, any time in his life. He also kind of calls it a dad hobby when he first meets these people. Um, but when they put the fish in the cooler, the thing starts flopping around like it's uh, uh, no clipping through the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> What the? <laughs> okay. It's like, and it's even making that sound like. <laughs> <laughs> it's just got like stock sound effects of like the freaking <laughs> things hitting the walls. The source. Is yeah. It, uh, oh my god! Source engine. Yeah. Like, stock sound effects. Um, but yeah, like all the fish seem like they're probably gonna be CG, which is like hey, it is whatever. And of course, they're around water constantly. The water is CG. Um. It is noticeable, but, I mean, if they're going to tell a really good story out of it, I'm fine with it. Also, this is an anime original. So okay. oh. there is no source material, and it's being made by Studio Nut, who made Saga Nut. Tons of Evil. Ooh. That's um, surprising. Very since, different vibe. Like, <laughs> yeah, because Studio Nut did really well in animating Tanya, but, I mean, yeah. you know, it doesn't seem like Negaposi Angler is too serious. I mean, it's not a serious anime. It's, it's about learning to just... Take life in stride. Yeah. Go with So I'm, I'm looking sometimes. forward to seeing what comes next. Um, the first episode was pretty good. Um, we'll see what happens. This is definitely something I'm going to keep watching this season. Well, speaking of fathers that – that fish, fishing fathers, can we talk about Shangri-La Frontier? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I haven't watched the second season yet. Uh, I haven't. Again, wait, I, what? I, 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 what's the point in me – watching it if i've already read it like 
duh. Oh my god, John. Every <laughs> fucking time. It's because we watch that stuff too. We don't just read it. Uh, well, I know what this part is going to be about, and I like this part, so... Uh, I just want, I want to know how the anime is going. How many episodes are have you watched all of them? You Liter- yeah, yeah. It's but and the second season is only one episode out right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it on High Dive? No, Crunchy. I didn't see it on Crunchy, dude. I don't like. I go to the stupid release schedule. Like here is the summer lineup or whatever it is, or not. What, what, the simulcast what season, season thing. Simulcast. That's what it was called. The simulcast season. And I look through the list, and sometimes shows are missing from there. I don't that's know weird. why. Yeah, like I just go to the just John, updated tab, and that sounds like a skill issue. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I swear. So when the show is updated on Crunchyroll, like if it comes out that day or mm. that hour or whatever it is, I think it's that same day. It drops off from the Simon class like list. And the only way they find it hmm. updated is either if it's on the home menu or if you go to the actual release calendar. That is weird because like, I, I don't think I've ever experienced that. But I rarely write, try to go watch stuff on Crunchyroll the day it comes out. So maybe that's why I've never experienced it. I do it all the time. And I notice things drop off. And then I was, that's why I was like, I don't see it on here. What the hell? <laughs> it wasn't on the list. I don't know what the heck. But that's so weird. That is that is weird though. That seems like par for the course of Crunchyroll though. I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't know. It's like if if it's updating the link or something, it needs to refresh. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. But okay. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited for this season. <laughs> I, I I am. I want to talk shocked. about it so much. <laughs> I'm like half a year ahead of everyone shocked. right now, and I'm just like I can't say anything because it's spoilers. I, I will shocked. say some people might hate uh, the season. Really? I'm shocked that I even liked the first season as much as I did. I did not go into it expecting I would enjoy the first season that much. But by the end of it, I'm like, this is one of the best things that came out last year. <laughs> <laughs> but the animation, C2C did a bang-up job with the animation. They did, uh, 100%. music was pretty good. The sound design's really good. I Dark I don't, Souls-ass boss fight. <laughs> I think people won't like the season as much as because mainly because it's going to take a little bit of a step away from Shangri-La Frontier. They're going to be entering a different video game. Oh. oh. Yeah. Honestly, I'm kind of fine with that because I just enjoyed the main character and his shenanigans so fucking yeah, me much. Too. Like, he's just an enjoyable person to watch. So well, there is... I'm fine with that. I think with how the pacing is going to go, I think half the season is going to be in Shangri-La. And then the other half is going to be the battle tournament arc. Wow, the fuck straight up half a season. Well, because there's one big thing we need to do in season two right now. Okay. We got to go punish punish a wolf. <laughs> but not Holo. But no, not the good wolf. Not, not, not the, the, not the wolf wise Holo. wolf. <laughs> no. no, this is Holo's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, so it, it looks great so far. I really like the op- I need to listen to it again to see, like, how into it I am. But I'll be honest, I kind of skipped the, uh, <laughs> I skipped over, like, part of the OP because I was like, all right, fuck this. I just want to watch you? the episode because I've been How dare waiting. you skip over I an know. OP by Lisa? How dare you? I, I don't, listen, look. I like look. Lisa, okay? I don't think this OP is that good. Mainly because Broken Games was so good. It was. The first OP was so was good, dude. Fun. It da, was. Da, 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 da. Yeah, oh, you're not wrong. So good. Perry, like, Perry, I have Perry, to rewatch no. it. Can we, can we, can we start normalizing, please, Anime Studios, can we start normalizing when you make a banger OP for your first season, you are not <laughs> obligated to change it for any additional seasons. <laughs> I mean... I would like it if they had just a a banger OP for the new season that was done by the same people. Like continue, could be like, Overlord yeah. does that where they just used uh, OXT and um, Myth and Royd the yeah, entire Myth and time. Royd, yeah. Well, and then when Myth and Royd broke up, they were like, "Well, we can get Mayu to sing for us, Mayu Mishima, so we'll just get her to sing for us in the o- o- the EDs and OPs." <laughs> Which I was like, "Perfect, that's fine." <laughs> it's, 
Yeah, Broken uh, Games is was was a really great OP. I fucking love that yeah, shit. I still listen to that song to this day. Like it's that yeah, good. F, it's a F, banger. F Z M Z is the name of the band. I, I, think. I don't remember. Oh, uh, hold on. I yes, yes, it is. I just looked up. it up. Yes, F Z M Z. Yeah. Great what job. Sure that's an actual great job. band or anything. Like I think this was like their first and only song that they released or something. Holy shit! <laughs> I think it was made that, for the anime. I don't know. That could be. I don't know. I'll, yeah, but I'll no. be honest, I was just so impatient on, like, wanting right. to get back into the anime. I was like, I'll just watch the OP later. Just give me the anime right now. Yeah, this is, uh, well, I mean, people are going to be pretty hyped. It's, uh, it's it's going to be Lycagon-focused for a little bit. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm sure. I don't see them reach, no, as, as an anime only, I don't see them reaching, uh... The wolf this season, or uh, but like they're it's making gonna be progress. A, a Lycagon encounter, let's call it. Okay, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I will say that I'm very much looking forward to it. Lots of cool shit happening. Oh, I've just looked something up. Uh, FZMZ, which is supposed to be pronounced Fathoms, by the way. I don't know where oh, you get fathoms. the word Fathoms from there, but it is composed of musicians picked from other bands to come together to make the music. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Um, so yeah, literally... so the guitar the guitarist uh, is is in the band Fathoms is named Gavi, but it's Ivan from Survive Said the Prophet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, yeah, so, like, yeah, I found an article about them on Crunchyroll, and it's just like, yeah, the people in this band, they're like five people that are plucked from other Japanese bands. They're like, hey, we need you to make an anime song. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And they funny. all said, bet, we're in. <laughs> it's cool. I like yeah. that. That's actually, I did not know that. That is actually super, super cool. All right. Oh, um, I guess we'll move on to me. Um, even though John just stole off my list. Uh, <laughs> no, that was that was you. I wanted to ask you about it because I hadn't watched it. Dude, you didn't even say anything. You just started talking about it. Yeah, that's why I segued into it because the dad likes to fish. Can there's, we? There's well, a segue. Can we, can we talk uh, about the uh, the the show this season that's got everyone in a tizzy with Suma Show? Yeah, okay. I've only seen the first episode so far, so uh, let okay. me say that first and foremost. I really fucking love it. I mean, I watched it, and the only expectation I had was, okay, obviously the title and description is uh, Twitter hate bait, and I'm <laughs> yeah. like, I don't give a shit about that. Let me judge it for what it is and see what it's about. And for those I who did? don't know, we're, the, the the anime we are talking about, because we gave it, it's a Japanese title. It's If My Wife Became an Elementary School Student. Yeah. Not creepy at all. Seriously. Like, don't worry about the summary. Don't worry about the title. Just fucking watch it. It is so sweet. It is so heartwarming. And it's also really tragic. It's sad. <laughs> it's sad. It's, it's, a, it's a show. So... I read Suma Show. Um, yeah. I have actually, I am caught up on it. I watched all three episodes this morning when I woke up because I had nothing else to do. <clears throat> so, um, <laughs> get to episode three and you'll be like, man, I feel so shitty. You'll once you watch, give it like if anyone's doubting what we're talking about, like for Suma Show, watch the first three episodes. If you watch the first three episodes, you'll understand what this show is going to be about. Um, mm. It is not about sexualizing an elementary school student at all. Literally, they don't even play off jokes about that stuff. No. Right, but it's it's about a family that ten years after the death of the uh the matriarch of the house, the mom dies. Um, and basically time has stopped for the daughter and the the father. And it just so happens that the mother, when she died, actually reincarnated and she's now a ten year old child instead. But she meets them and then she's like she's hesitant at first to go meet the family because she just wants to see how they're doing. But when she notices that, you know, her husband's like a fucking dead fish, she was worried about him. So she had to go check up on him. And she now... straight up yelled at them. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, the fuck are you two idiots doing? Yeah, it, Live it's, well. It's a show about things that were left unsaid. What if you had an opportunity to say them? 
Yeah, it's it's a very it's sad show. About the, it's, it's about sad. the things left unsaid when a when a relationship ends, basically. Yeah, so like you know the, basically the the father uh, is after his wife dies in a tragic, horrible car accident, he <laughs> just stops living. He he's like for ten years he doesn't know how to take care of his daughter. He doesn't cook, and it's just like time stopped for this family when yeah. the mom died. Which I'm Which sure is, is so something sad. people can relate to. That's, it's very no, it's relatable. all too real. It, it's, it's very like it hit me. Yeah. So I bad. mean, yeah. I like, oh. For some people, for some people, it might be more resonant than others, especially if you yeah. experience something like that. Well, if you've ever lost someone that you've uh, truly cared about, and you'll you'll understand what I mean when I say you know things left unsaid. Yeah. You have things left unsaid to people that you care about that you can no longer say to them. It's it's about trying to get over that. And what if you were presented an opportunity where you could actually say the things that you that were left unsaid. Yeah. Which it's a little a bit great, bittersweet watching it. It's a great premise oh, yeah. for a story, but the the thing is, and we were talking about this last night, uh, just off off stream, off, off recording, that the sad part is that so many people are only looking like very surface level at this, and they're thinking, oh my god, it's an adult hanging out with an elementary school kid. It must be sick. Yeah, and they make jokes about that in the show. They're the the husband is like takes a picture of her, and it's like, "What the fuck are you doing? You're not even. We're not family right now. You're gonna get. What are you gonna do with the police? Catch your phone, you freaking idiot!" And smacks the husband. <laughs> like it's funny. <laughs> they play it off for laughs because they understand yeah. the implication. And it's like they the the wife says like, "Look, I'm currently the daughter of a different family right now, and I can't be part of your family." Even though I am your wife and I have the memories of being your wife, you guys need to learn how to live without me. And that's what the show is about. The, about the daughter and the father learning how to move on and live yeah. their lives yeah. without the, the wife anymore. And it's oh, – dude, it's such a good story. Genuinely, please give this a chance. Like, yeah. actually give this a chance. Don't don't buy into the fake hate. These people that are hating it haven't watched it. They haven't read it. Yeah, like the I I talked about it in the preview when I saw that this was getting an anime. I was like, people are gonna hate this because of the surface level reason of, oh my god, it's about them basically trying to do a relationship with an elementary school student. It's like, no, that's not even remotely close. Yeah, yeah. It, so far, because I I have watched the first episode of this, it's it's kind of touching. Yeah, I like it. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep watching it. Yep, no, for sure. I guess uh, oh, also I guess, uh, Aoyuki voices the main character, <laughs> voices Takai, um, the mm. the wife character. Yeah. So yes. <laughs> that's pretty cool, you know. I love Aoyuki, so yes. Again, another uh, saga of Tony the Evil reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. I guess I'll go next. Um, what is the next thing I want to talk about? Uh, so uh, earlier today I watched um an anime called orb which is one i didn't even know was happening is well the actual titles orb on the movements of the earth uh I, oh, if the I had historical one right it, yeah if i had known about this before we did our season preview because i didn't even really uh look that closely at ona's that were airing this season because this is technically an ona because it's only airing on on streaming services it's on netflix it is airing week to week as well um which good job Netflix. I'm, it's taken you like 15 years, but good job. You finally figured it out. Um, you figured out how to air, air stuff week to week. Um, Weren't they airing anime week to week in Japan only? And then like for finally, a while. Yes. Yeah. And now they've started doing yeah. it in, uh, in the U S and around the world. It's good job. It only took you 15 years, but good job. Um, <laughs> but no, so orb is a historical drama, uh, anime and it's, I won't say it's like Vinland Saga and that it takes place like around his actual historical events, but the, the stuff that they're talking about is based on actual historical events. Um, so it takes place in a very European style, uh, setting in like the 15, 1600s era. Um, and the main character is a young kid who is sort of like a Galileo Galilei, um, he is sort of realizing that maybe the earth isn't the center of the universe and does actually move around the sun. 
Um, and there's, it seems like they're setting up a lot of conflict in this between like that and like church doctrine of like the earth is at the center of everything. Why would God put the earth not at the center of the universe? That kind of stuff. The first episode of this, who you get a little TV MA rating at the top and all it says is violence. And I thought, Hmm. Okay. Violence. I'm thinking like fisticuffs, fighting, stabbing, things like that. No, it earns this rating because in the very first episode in like within the first 10 minutes, five minutes, really, there is a scene where a church uh, priest or someone working for the church is ripping someone's fingernails off. Oh, and and uh, unlike other places in like horror or, or any other dramatic stuff where they show torture like this. They don't cut away when they t- when they tear the the fingernail off. You see it, and boy, oh. is it made me go woo. <laughs> oh. Okay then. I was I was ooh ooh that made me not ha- oh that was not a good feeling. <laughs> and it's like it's so so visceral because you hear the crack and you see the blood spill out. And oh oh, I was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, congrats on having giving me such a visceral reaction to that. Um, this anime, um, I like where this is going for a historical drama because, like, obviously, it's based on a real historical event that did happen. Galileo was persecuted by the Roman Catholic Church for uh, teaching his students that the Earth revolved around the sun and the Earth was not the center of the universe. Um, he was put on house arrest actually for the last twenty years of his life. Um, and um, I'm hoping we're going to see, like, that's going to be the main conflict here. Um, it also kind of gave me, the first episode at least, gave me a uh, kind of feeling of Apothecary Diaries, where it's a s- overall serious story, but it also knows that it needs to have a little levity in it. So there is a couple of scenes here and there of just characters being a little more light. Um, so that's cool. Um if you're really into historical dramas like I am, check this out. Uh, it's kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't really see any kind of marketing for this until like a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I'm happy I checked it out. Uh, the first episode was great. Uh, super engaging. Um, I think it's also going to like, because uh, since it's focusing a lot on astronomy, I think it's also going to go a lot into like the science of astronomy and like teach you about it. So that'd be cool. Okay. That's cool. Uh, how many uh, how many episodes is this slated for? Do you know? Um, let me check. Probably twelve. Uh, <laughs> uh, Twenty five. But... Oh, oh my really? god! Really? Two quarters. Twenty five episodes, and this is based on a manga. Um, that is, I think it's finished, but uh, yeah, it's finished. It's a sixty two chapter, eight volume manga. Um, oh, so that's, that's probably quick. that might be it's a probably full gonna adaptation be a, then. Probably going to be a full adaptation. Um. And it's done by Madhouse, and it looks great. Oh, well, shit! It, it looks it looks done f- by Madhouse. All right. The only detractor here is that it's fucking on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously, uh, that's it. <laughs> the good thing is it's it's airing week to week on Netflix. Uh, there are currently, as of the time of recording this, three episodes out. I think new episodes are on Saturdays. Yeah, Saturdays. Okay. The fact uh, that it's airing week to week will definitely help it gain fans. So yeah. And um, it's the the shit, ma- both, I'll watch it. Both the manga and the anime adaptation are they have sin and tags. So I mean, I'm, I'm just, it's probably going to be serious the whole way through. So I'm super looking forward to seeing where this goes, knowing that it's it's almost certainly going to be a um, a complete adaptation of this manga. It's done by Madhouse, who after Free Run, I'm like, shit, make more shit, guys, please. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I I'm I'm waiting to watch the Overlord movie. So let's see if Madhouse disappoints me or not. <laughs> Overlord might be a lost cause at this point, John. <laughs> it, it, it's already a lost cause at this point, but it doesn't matter. All right, there's I that get, spark of hope in John's I, heart. I'm still gonna watch it. It doesn't matter how bad it is. I like the the light novel that much. I'll keep watching the anime. I'll keep consuming content <laughs> surrounding it. Um, one last thing about this before we move on is that the main character, his name is Rafal. Uh, there's also a lot of Rafal? very your yes. There's a very lot of not Europeans. Raphael, Rafal. no Rafal. Okay, uh, very European sounding names in this, as you would kind of expect. Uh, but is voiced by Maya Sakamoto, the f- same person who voices Shinobu in the Monogatari series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, 
she, this woman, Maya Sakamoto, does not get anywhere near enough credit. She has like such range in her fucking voice. She voices not just Loli Shinobu, but like Dami Mami Shinobu. And right. she voices so many male characters too. It's unreal the range in her voice. Um, she is also the voice of the major in Japanese. Just saying, is she? Oh, yes. oh. There's only one major in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. <laughs> yeah, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, uh, she's also um, the voice of a kid in ReZero, by the way. I know, <laughs> but that is airing right now. I I thought that would be a good segue. Just saying, just sure, waiting sure. for Shinoda to talk about it because he no no. Bored. I need I need I needed to wait for you to just finish uh finish doing the thing. Okay, Rezero's back. I'm fucking loving it. I'm very happy that it's back. Uh, more <laughs> even more lollies now. I'm just like how. I'm, did I mean, you see I'm not that, complaining. Did, but... did you did you see that image that I posted on our Discord server where I said that every uh, every masterpiece no. has its cheap copy and it's literally it's oh Anunnaki. yeah yeah it's yeah. Anunnaki from the Monogatari series holding Shinobu and um uh, what's her uh Anunnaki's hand and it's literally the fucking same image from ReZero the season oh with yeah. him holding a. Uh... Liz and whatever I don't know yeah. Beatrice. And I po I posted those yeah. pictures side by side. This at every master every masterpiece yeah, has a cheap copy. I do remember that, that was one. funny. That was actually really funny. Uh, Subaru could but, never yeah. be as good as Aranagi. Let's be honest. Two went very different characters. All right, <laughs> like chill very. out. Um, no, Rezero's back. I'm freaking loving it. Um. The arc uh, that's going on is really fucking interesting because you have a bunch of uh, witch cultists uh, at the same place and it seems like a lot of shenanigans are going down and I'm just like, yo, let's fucking go. Uh, it's cool. Not much has happened yet, unfortunately, So, but it, it's ReZero. It's always, he's going to die a bunch. He's going to scream a solve lot. The uh, yeah. He's going to die a bunch, scream a lot to figure out the riddle of how to solve this uh, with minimal uh, <laughs> what, what did I bullshit. put as a TLDR of like, here, let me spoil ReZero for you. Subaru screams a lot, then dies to only figure out one little puzzle piece of information. <laughs> see, I was Pretty gonna, <laughs> I was, gonna, I was gonna. See, when you post that at our Discord server, I was gonna say, I think you're giving him too much credit. It would be one crumb of a puzzle piece that he would get. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what the most surprising thing so far is? The fact what? that we've already had two OPs. I'm surprised what? by that. Yeah. What? OPs? Hold everything. Did they change well, the Not OP? two different. Not, sorry. Not two different OPs as in the, the OP actually happened back to back. Oh, oh yeah. Because back in the day for the first season of ReZero. Second season never, as well. What, they, really, the second season as well. Yeah, they, I remember they, saw, they saw never the did the OP. Like, <laughs> yeah, you saw the OPs maybe two or three times. And the ED. Like, you you might... Like, you, when you see them, you're like, Oh my god, is that the OP and ED? Because, like, it doesn't happen. <laughs> it's like, we've got a 25-minute runtime, and we're going to use every damn minute of it. <laughs> Fuck I, you know the OP, what? fuck the ED. <laughs> you know what? I can respect that, though. Yeah, I mean, that is something given, I legitimately love. You're you're given a, a set runtime, and you're like, well, we could go the you know the distance and do what everyone else does, or we could just use more of the runtime to tell more story. I can respect that. Yeah, and considering how much content there is in Zero, ReZero, like they need every single minute. Is so. the light novel for ReZero finished? Or is I don't know. Like that's your category. I will look it up real quick. Uh, it is currently still publishing. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it started back in January of 2014, and it does not have an end date yet, at least according to Mal. Interesting. I can't imagine it going for too much longer, though. I mean, uh, I how, is it like One Piece, where it's like, the, the, we've trying to do the one main goal for 10 years and it still hasn't even moved an iota. 
See, of like you anything say that, John. I, I I have said this almost as a joke for years now with ReZero. I I'm beginning to think it might not be a joke. Where I th- I legit think I don't know the ending. I don't know where the light novel is right now. So if this actually is a spoiler, I don't even know it's a spoiler. But my I genuinely think that the ending of ReZero is going to be Subaru actually finally succeeding and getting everything he wants. And then there's going to be some kind of like, I don't know, know, something that is just like a snap of the fingers and he's right back where he was before he actually got transported back into that world. And he's going to be back in the real world. And he's that would be one of the scene. absolute worst ways to end ReZero. And I'm here for it. I want, but it would be it would be 100. percent It would be 100 percent consistent with the idea that Subaru must suffer. It, I mean, uh, yeah. Not yeah. only would Subaru suffer, now all of the fans of the of ReZero would suffer, and I'm here for that. I that would sit be the happily. biggest I, fuck you. <laughs> I've I know. Said this, I've said this for years that that's gonna be like how it ends, and I'm beginning to suspect I might be right. <laughs> <laughs> no way. God, if it could does you imagine? that, if it act, oh, dude, if it actually does that, I will praise ReZero for being the best actual like my <laughs> anime. It imagine it its really own is, fans so much. <laughs> imagine it really is that big of a troll though. That would be oh, so that'd be terrible. Cool. That'd be absolutely god awful. I mean, it'd be great. It would be great fodder to point and laugh at all the fans. It's like, <laughs> oh no, it would be great for time. me because I don't. As a ReZero anti, it would be amazing for me if that's exactly <laughs> what happened. But Take also, the like, place from man. MHA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be to, uh, and to be clear, like, I I don't hate ReZero. I don't think it's great, but I don't hate it either. It's like it's kind of just yeah, it's there. I'm gonna I am going to watch this whole thing, but it's probably gonna be something that I watch once all 16 episodes of this season are out. Have we not been doing spoiler cast for ReZero? I think we, we have. have. We did we? one for the first and second season. Okay, yeah, I, was like, I remember yeah. editing those. Actually, the the ReZero spoiler cast we did it was one of our very first. God, spoiler really? cast for the first season. Yeah, I think it was one of if yeah, not cause, the first because season cast one we, we were did. so excited to talk about it. We were like it was one thing every every week. The day that that episode aired, we would all get on Skype at the time and be like, "Did you guys see the episode this week?" Yeah, I remember watching that the first hour long first episode. Was it ninety minutes or an hour? Is it, I think it was an hour. Season one. I think it was an hour. I think it was, it was an super hour. long. I remember watching that and being blown away by it. And I was like, I was like, oh, I'm here for ReZero. Then I went and go re, uh, read the first three volumes, and I was like, oh, I'm not here for ReZero anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I was like, I, I'm sick of this. This is dumb. I don't want to read any more of this. <laughs> uh, oh, my cat is knocking stuff over. Oh, nice. Hey, hey baby. Hi. Why would you okay. do such a thing? I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> a cat being a cat. So, um, I guess I'll go next. What okay. are, can I talk about another problematic show? Okay. Sure. So, the do-over damsel conquers the dragon emperor. Um, There's nothing problematic about it. It's adorable. Except that title. <laughs> so, it's problematic because she's like 10. 13. And she's like 10. <laughs> Oh, oh, Genoda, okay, Sneeko, calm down. She's under Oh, uh, no, don't do that. Don't say that. Come <laughs> hey, on, yo, you defending don't. cuties right now? You if... defending cuties, bro? Oh, God. If she's old <laughs> enough to bleed, she's old enough to breed. <laughs> oh. I think Sneeko actually All said right. that. All I don't right. think Sneeko actually said that. But, uh, no, I, I don't think the, uh, the anime is actually that bad, to be honest. Um, I... I find it weird that they keep talking about the fact that she's under the age of 14. Like, why does the Dragon Emperor need a wife that's under the age of 14? It's very weird of that how fixated they are about talking about that. There's something to it. Like, it's not just a throwaway line, or it's not just a, yeah. oh, he's a lolicon. No, no, yeah, there's yeah, something there, to there it. Ha- I mean, there better be something to it, because they keep bringing it up, and it's kind of fucking like- weird. It's kind of like those people that are constantly railing against things, and they turn out to be that very thing. Well, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a whole thing about that. But, no, I'm saying, like, I think the, the prince, the dragon emperor dude is, like, 18 or something or 20. He's I don't a lot, know his age. He, well, the, he's a freaking adult. And yeah. he specifically has been looking for someone who's, like, the age of uh, – under the age of 14 for, like, his bride. Bro, that's a little weird. And it's just like, well, yeah. 
yeah, that's weird. And also, uh, it's uh, so the the anime is about a princess who is supposed to get married to this prince, but as it as it turns out, the prince is actually in love with his own sister, and she catches them kissing and having an illicit. Oh, more than um, kissing! <laughs> Way oh, more well, than kissing. It's implied you, you, that they do more than kissing. You have my attention. Yeah. No, so then no. she gets <laughs> then she gets set up to be executed as a traitor and a spy of of the country. Then she gets killed. And then she gets uh, reincarnated. She travels back in time. Yeah, she travels back in time six years. So from when she was 16 to like to now when she's like 10. I swear to God she's 10, dude. I don't think she's 13. I think I d- she wasn't 16 when she died. She was older than that. I, I don't think so. I don't but... like this conversation. <laughs> One but is she's under the age way. of 14. <laughs> that's, yeah. all we, I, that's all I can confirm because they kept talking about it. They brought it up more than once. Then they had that weird like section where he's like, "I'm gonna teach you the taste of an adult," and it's like he feeds her a croissant, and it's like, "Hey yo," yeah, <laughs> like, phrasing, uh, "Hey yo," how they did that. Was he's like, very "Now young. you'll never be able to resist me," and it's like, "Hey yo," she like ten, bro, like calm down here. Would like, you I don't like, like a this. croissant, Jimmy? <laughs> Jimmy's oh, no. man. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> we're so we're so canceled after this. We're so I, fucked. I don't think the anime is bad. Right I just think it's weird that they keep focusing on that. Um, and yeah. you know, look, it's supposed to be take place in the medieval times, and back in the day, it wasn't weird to get married to twelve year olds, fourteen year olds, like whatever, dude. I'm 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 past that. It's not saying we should marry twelve year olds. It's not what this entire show is about. I think people cry. It is about a little better. sus. <laughs> Well, it's just no, a little. It, I think it, in universe they keep talking and referring to it, so I'm like, that's a little sus. But maybe Chinoda's right. Uh, it's gonna be part of the plot, like to do something with the dragon shit. Well, here's the thing. Uh, like even he said under his voice uh, on episode two, because yeah. I only uh, because there's only a couple years left, and I'm just like, what's that about? Like, what? Yeah, yeah. And he also talks like, yeah, the age gap isn't like his his own mother is like his his father was 50 or something or 60 or whatever and his wife his, his mom was like 20 when they got married or some shit yeah yeah so it's like yeah we get it it's it's whatever it is the age gap In- thing is not a huge deal interesting uh other than that though i think the i think the main character is pretty cool she's, she's pretty you know she ride or die that's pretty that's pretty dope of her no, she is, and it's because she got betrayed by the person who uh, who was supposed to be her love, and she's like, okay, you're going to watch out for me, I respect loyalty, and yeah. you know what? That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I, I don't think it's, uh, as far as, like, this is kind of a saturated genre, in my opinion, nowadays, of, like, main character girl gets reincarnated or not reincarnated but like gets teleported back in time to redo her life like this is the how many we, we've i don't had, know like, if it's saturated but we've had I, a couple i mean I the reincarnation really... stuff is kind of saturated right now i mean it's kind of like the isekai stuff i mean sometimes an no, isekai can like, be a in, reincarnation in terms of shoujo too. manga like this is a very saturated genre there's a lot of it shoujo manga that's like that use this exact same premise of like traveling back in time because yeah. of something and they have to figure out whatever and it's just like it's a little played out uh and you know there's there's the shoujo trope of like the main character guy is he's a misunderstood um bad boy type of thing and it's just like yeah it's a little formulaic for my taste uh, i'm getting a little sick of it but as long as I like the heroine, then it it's all good. <laughs> and I do like the heroines. I, I, I recommend people to watch it. If you like shoujo and you like strong heroines, like, you know, go go ahead and watch this anime. John likes heroin. That is an out-of-context clip we could definitely use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, black tar heroin. <laughs> I mean, considering where he lives and all that. Get in yeah, know, here. Right? <laughs> but, yeah, that's all I got for that. I have a question about something on your list, John, if you want yep. to go ahead and talk about it. Because you mentioned it briefly in our Discord server, and it got me curious. 365 days until the wedding. Yes. 
Uh, what is that about? Okay, so the main premise is that these two people work at a vacation company. I think. Yeah. Okay. Travel uh, company. Like a, a travel, travel agency. agency. They work at a travel, travel agency. agency. Yeah. And there's a new branch that's opening up in like Anchorage, Alaska, or some shit. And uh, they are the company is like, we need a new management team to go work over in Anchorage for the travel agency. Uh, t- and we're gonna prioritize people who don't have families. So okay. two loners in the office are like, uh, oh shit, we don't want to go. One of them is a weirdo who likes maps. The other one is just really in love with his cat. Uh, so they decide to get fake married. That's oh. the premise. Okay. The, it's a, um, I called it on the preview. I called it the indecent proposal. That wasn't the indecent proposal. I was thinking of the proposal. Oh, <laughs> not the, I was thinking of, proposal. I was thinking of the movie. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. <laughs> Oh, I love that one. That one's funny. The, the, I love the you, fake, bro. The fake, I love yeah. you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Adam Sandler and Kevin... Kevin James, yeah. Kevin James. <laughs> yeah. I did like that one. But no, it's uh, the proposal where it's like, for one reason or another, the two main characters have to get married. And then they just have like a meet cute thing where they slowly fall in love. I'm like, the premise itself is not terrible. I've seen it before. Like I, like I said, literally the proposal. Uh, but... It depends on how much I like the characters. Now, the voice actor for the girl, she's the one who voices um Yor. What's her name? Saya? Uh, I don't remember her name. That is a great question. Let me let me look that up real quick. The person Keep who going, voices Yor. Hmm? Keep going. I'll okay. look it up. Uh so far I've Sari watched... Hayami. Sari Hayami, thank you. Yeah. Um Thank you. So far. I don't think it's that great of a rom com. Like the the meet cute thing is not great. The characters themselves are pretty fucking boring. Mm. Like I I really can't stand the the guy. Like he's he's so cringe. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to see him improve and evolve. Like there's a little bit more to their character uh, I can see, but like they seem like. Very boring people. I'm and supposed I'm just to like... like the two main characters that this is about and want to care about them falling in love. I don't currently yeah. like the two characters. Like the only reason I like the the girl character is because she's voiced by Sari Hayami. Outside of that, I don't really care for her. I Farouz is also <laughs> in this anime. Yes, she is, but she's not a main character. She's no. a supporting cast. Un- unfortunate. Um. So, uh, yeah, I'm just like. Man, this is kind of weak. As far as rom coms go, this is kind of like one of the weakest ones I've ever seen. Wow, that's a shame yeah, because like the the idea could be well done. Like I, mean, I said, I like chick flicks. I like rom coms. You I like the, the proposal? I love you know? good meat cutes. You know? Yeah. Uh, this is not a good meat cute. And like I said, you're supposed to like the two main characters that are supposed to fall in love. I don't like them. They're they're just boring. Like I like I said, the main the guy is cringe, and Sayuri Hayami's character is just boring. Hmm. Uh, That's now a shame they because did... I was actually kind of thinking about trying this out, and judging by what you're saying, it's like maybe I'm better off finding the romance story somewhere else this season. I I might just drop the series. I don't know. I think hmm. I'm like two episodes in right now. Yeah. It's not that engaging at the moment. No, no. And if I, if not, like they have one twist that's happening right now, which is like someone calls the dude and it's like, I know what you did last summer. Uh, no, he doesn't actually. <laughs> they don't actually that would say be that. actually kind of funny. <laughs> no, they, they basically go like, I know that you're getting old. You're only getting fake married. So you don't go to have to go to Anchorage. And I'm like, well, yeah, no shit. Like these two people who never have interacted in our office all of a sudden are like, oh, actually we're married now. We're getting married imagine, now. We've imagine been dating if that was this the, entire time, and it's imagine like imagine if that was the twist, though, John. Like it, you, you think it's going to be a romance, and at the end of the first episode, it's like I know what you're doing. I'm coming for you. Click, and it becomes like this thriller. <laughs> That'd be a lot more interesting, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but like that's the only twist, quote unquote twist, that that's happening so far. Uh, mm. It's just it's not good enough to grip me into it. Um, it's just boring. It's committing the cardinal sin of storytelling. It's boring. <laughs> How dare you be content that's not entertaining or engaging? Yeah. I mean. 
Yeah, uh, I, just, I was really curious about it because I, I saw that you you mentioned that in our Discord servers. I was just kind of wanting you to like yeah, expand on it. It's very much the most anime that's ever animated. <laughs> it is. It is certainly an anime of all time. It is certainly an anime of all time. <laughs> all right. What do you got, Shinoda? Uh, let's go with trash that I love because it's not actually trash. Done, Machi. Uh, okay. right. I thought you were going to talk it's about SEO like, GGO. Right. <laughs> wow. Wow. Full on. This man said, let me take a break. Um, nah, so Den Machi's back. And uh, it's funny. This is the first time we actually see Bell doing the title of picking up girls in a dungeon because he was doing some training for a date. Uh it's starting off slow uh, for whatever this arc turns out to be, and I'm liking it. It's after the last arc, which was so fucking hype and intense. It's like, all right, take a breather, slow down, reset. And it's cool. It's fun. It's getting the little comedy aspects that Danmachi does uh, out of the way so that it can go into a more serious arc uh, towards the later part of uh, the season. I really like it. Um... It's, uh, same old Danmachi, uh, back into place. Well, I wouldn't say same old. It, it's the... It's a more later version of Danmachi. But, 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 we have to answer the serious question Oh here. my god. Are her boobs bigger this season? It's very important. Because they have gotten bigger every single season up to this point. I don't know. Because they haven't focused on Hestia that much and the times she was on screen like she had it like really covered up so I'm actually not sure wow she's becoming not a slut that is that is character development right there so I have a question about Don Maji okay like in all seriousness yes it's for why, Gooners. <laughs> why do the she's women true. in Don Maji like the, the main character guy he's cute that is uh, a great. That's the only no, reason. That is no, a great no, question, no. John. It is because it's fantasy fulfillment. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously part of it's it fantasy is fulfillment. Fan like all harem is fantasy fulfillment, so that's that's an obvious thing. But what redeeming qualities does uh, Bell have that makes these women? He's like, selfless. Just... I mean, to be fair, he is. Okay. Yeah, he, he very much is the hero of the story in terms of like. He's a good guy that watches out for others, and he tries his damn best, and it's endearing to see. Okay. Yeah. Typical, like, hero, like, he, he, the typical main character type of shit. Yeah. Okay. It's like the, the stereotypical, like, uh, classic hero. Um, the very chivalrous, very selfless, um, always looking out for all the other people around him be before himself. That, yeah, that's he's really like a, why they're supposed good to guy. like him. Yeah, he's like Deku, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Like your titular of um, show, like main character shonen guy. He's a, yeah, no, he's a, he literally he's a is. Nice, he's a nice guy without being a nice guy. TM, <laughs> no TM. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no TM. TM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's an actual like stand up guy. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um. That's kind of why he the, the women gravitate toward him. Also, all of them say he has a cute face. I maybe in this world he's more attractive than the average guy. I don't know. I, just like I think he's cute. No, is no, 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 no. He's not he's a show. No, okay, no, he's, not at all. He's he, he's he's very twinkish though. <laughs> yeah, he's he not has a big twink energy. <laughs> um, okay. but just because you look like a twink does not mean you were gay. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, there is. It just like, means there's a high probability. I'm moving on. <laughs> <laughs> there is no hint of that at all in this. Uh, no. Um, okay. Although well, there is one of the, um, the male gods that kind of like eyes him up from time to time. I forget which one it is, but. Oh, uh, wasn't it the one with the elephant trunk? No. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. The, character, the creators of Don Machi knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah. Um, I, I Listen, I will watch Don Machi. 
Not because I think it is good, but because I am in the middle of a sunk cost fallacy with Don Machi, I have to watch it. <laughs> yeah, like, Shit, no. John, you were right. She is 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I I'm pretty sure Chinoda, she's 10. <laughs> I love how Chinoda will just sit there and keep researching stuff like 15, 20 minutes after we've so far moved on. Look, I hyper focus sometimes. Fuck off. Yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure she she says she's ten. <laughs> like I I couldn't remember. I was, I was like, you can you can tell How me if I'm wrong. How do you like, feel now? <laughs> <laughs> I feel corrected. That's fine. <laughs> like I said, the thing that they focused on was that she had to be under the age of fourteen. I was like, and then she travels back in time six years, and I'm pretty sure she was supposed to be married when she was sixteen. Yeah, so sixteen like, to the twenty one year so old. She's got to be at ten. I was like, I'm pretty sure she's supposed to be 10. Girl, are you, ten, are you a 10? You're the only 10 I see. <laughs> oh, hey, yo, no. Hey, yo. No. Uh, all right, well. Do not use that as an actual pickup line for elementary yeah, school kids. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. Listen, if you think going to an elementary school to pick up kids is a good idea, I think you need to have a seat. Uh, I, no, I think I think we're far beyond having a seat, and I think you need a leather jacket. I don't no, no, I disagree. It. It's a specifically made seat that you should have. <laughs> yeah, one the that what chair. has electrical arcs yeah. sparking through it. Oh, please don't, please don't. Anyway, um, I guess I'll talk about. Ooh, I don't know which one I want to talk about right now. Eh, doesn't matter. Um, I'll talk about the first. I'll become a villainous who goes down in history. I this is another saturated market of yeah. shoujo manga, where it's like the perspective. I love this genre. Is like I it's love an isekai. Uh, it, but it's like Hold a girl who plays a. It's Ultima game uh, isekai. Yeah, Ultima Ultima game isekai. But instead of being the main character, they become the villainous. Yeah. And, there's like there's been a few and we've still had a couple of uh, those as well. Yeah. yeah, again, it's becoming an oversaturated market at this point. Like, there's plenty of shoujo manga that I read that have the exact same trope of I became the villainous, and most of them are pretty funny. There's one that I really like that I can't wait for the anime for, because uh, I think the the villainous it's like she's so fucking adorable. I was like she tries to be mean and evil, but she's actually like the sweetest girl, and it's hilarious because she's like oh. <laughs> I'm doing this to be evil. And then she like helps out people and saves lives. <laughs> She's like, how oh! dare she do the Bacarina thing? <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing, dude. I the love Ojo it. Sama laugh, the iconic. Yeah. Ojo I love Sama that laugh. laugh. It's really good. Uh, it's her name's Berta, and she's super cute. I can't wait for that anime. But for this one, it's um, she trains to be uh the strongest villain as possible, but she's it's more of a serious like anime it's not bad by any means but i yeah, think it doesn't have comedic moments it's it's like a little bit more ser like she's trying to be just hilarious villain but like the world itself is a little bit more seriously taken yeah yeah and there's a a weird thing where it's like you know normally when the person becomes the villainous the person who is the heroine of the series is usually the antagonist to the villainous. In this one, they're not. They're, like, friends. And it's like, huh. And there's something else going on in the story where it's like, um... So is the... she just incompetent? <laughs> no, she's not incompetent. She's actually too competent. And that's oh. the problem. Like, there's a whole issue of her becoming competent because apparently they have, like, this superstition where uh, people who are abnormal like that where they're, like, you know, she's 10 years old and she's learned how to use magic. Most people don't even start using magic until they're 13. And she's mastered it to a degree where she can use, like, telekinesis and shit. So they're just like, she's an abnormal. And that's bad because, according to the prophecy, the abnormal is going to cause a great war. Mm. And it's like, oh, okay, so she might be the villainous because she wants to, like, get rid of all corruption. So she's going to start a war against, like, the corrupt nobles. And it's like, oh, you know, that's kind of interesting. I I think it's a little different, not too yeah. bad. Yeah. Again, like I said, it's a saturated genre, uh, and most of the time, they're not very serious ones. There is one that uh, she becomes a villainous, and it's a serious one, and I I thought that one was dumb as shit, because it's just Which like... Which one? 
I don't remember. I, I watched it a while ago. It was like a year or two ago where it's like she she's supposed to be the villainess and she tries her best to be like she just thinks that she's going to be relegated to being a villainess and that no matter how hard she tries to not be the villainess, it's going to the story is going to autocorrect itself to make her the bad guy anyway. The but one that's not with Yumela? I don't remember, dude. I don't remember their names. I just know the premise. Mm. And she saves like all these people. The, she basically saves the main cast of people. And they did all she have a shit ton her. of dark magic? Like, was that her thing? No, not not. Oh no, not that one. That that one is the Ifaru's one. No, not that one. Okay. No, this is a more serious one. The Yumela one was a comedy one. That was completely the level nine nine villainous one. That that completely. Yeah. No, this one is um, there were there was one season of it. I hated it because it made me angry. Because the villainess in this one is... It's supposed to be a serious, like, anime. And she's a really good person. She cares about, like, correcting the kingdom and stuff like that. But for whatever fucking reason, she just seems to just think that because she is the villainess, she's gonna have to be banished from the thing and everyone's gonna turn on her, even though everyone loves her. It's just stupid. It's like, do you not see with your eyes? Do you not talk to the people you're helping? Like, I don't understand. Is there a communication problem here? Are you just fucking stupid? Anyway, um, yeah, that's the only other, like, villainous, serious villainous anime I can think of in recent years that I can compare to this one. Uh, but this one, it's not bad. It's not bad. Mainly because I don't hate the villainous character. <laughs> that, like, <laughs> the other one was good as, because I like the supporting cast, but the main villainous chick, the main character, she was annoying. In this one, she's not annoying. Yet. I've only seen – there's only been, like, two or three episodes, so she may become annoying at the end. Because there was another one where, like, Isekai, the one where the princess wants the – she's, like, supposed to get executed. And the only reason – the one that you liked from a couple seasons ago, Chinoda, that I hated. Because I was oh. like, she's annoying. She Reincarnated does the, uh, into an Oto game at, Otome game as a villainous with only destruction flags? I don't remember the title. I just that remember is a it mouthful. was – it was the one where she doesn't do things to save the kingdom because she wanted to, like, actually save the people. She did it because she didn't want to die, and she was just fucking annoying the entire time. Can't be Katarina. Oh. Yes, it was not there? Wasn't there one recently? Oh, it was Katarina. Where... Yeah, it was Katarina. I was like, I, I, I will remember the name if you tell me, but... Wasn't yeah, that there one an I found anime annoying. like this recently that had yeah, uh, the main character was, like, a lesbian? <laughs> oh, yeah, that one oh, I that hated, was... too. Uh, that was from like a couple of seasons ago as well, wasn't it? Yeah, she becomes yeah, the very... heroine, but she falls. In, but she wants to like fucking fuck the uh, villainous instead. I'm yeah. in love with the villainous. Yes, yeah, that that's one it. Is... I just I remember that one. I've because heard decent things about it actually. That that made that made the rounds because like apparently in the at least one episode of it, there's like the characters having a serious discussion about like same sex relationships and like why it's not necessarily a bad thing and everyone's like wow it's kind of base coming from you japan very good <laughs> yeah uh <coughs> my issue with that was just that they play up the uh well it's fine because we're both women yeah. trope thing too much you know it's like yeah oh yeah sexually assaulting someone is completely fine because we're the same gender like yeah that's yeah. fine it's like, like uh, it's, it, actually... it's, it's 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 funny because they have that serious conversation and just immediately go to sexual assault. Like, okay, sure, I'm. Yeah, it's great just like I don't. Under... chatting with you. It's, it's actually like you're, funny. Uh, three hundred having... six. No, sexual assault is not funny. You know what I mean? No, no, not that. Uh, the whole lesbian thing because I just remembered. Uh, the three hundred sixty-five days until marriage. Uh, they actually the most recent episode just had um uh, one of the. One episode character uh was turned out to be a lesbian in disguise, and I don't know that that was I, and like they were outright about it. They were like, "Yeah, I'm into uh, um my lover is a girl, but I had to get married for convenience sake." One of these days, one of these days, Japan will will get it right. I I applaud them trying. <laughs> I, I applaud the, I applaud the attempts. <laughs> One of these days you will get it right where you have the serious relationship without the sexual assault. Listen, the old people are going to eventually die out. <laughs> the ones yeah. making the rules and being so such hard asses about it are eventually going to die out. Yeah. Maybe in the next 50 years, Japan will finally just, be okay with like gays. How how awesome would it be, John, if like the first person to do like a super serious 
um, or not necessarily super serious, but like a not a comedic take on a like a romantic relation, same sex romantic relationship with someone like Hiroyuki Imaishi. Just imagine like him doing like a gay romance thing. It's like manliness. It's now fuck me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hey yo, that's like a whole Hold subgenre, on. dude, of, of Yaoi Bara. <laughs> There's a whole subgenre of Bara shit that's like that. Like we're I'm, all super buff and manly, and we're gonna fuck each other in the ass. And it's like, all I, right. I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that Imaishi is really good at this whole like be a man, you know, be manly and stuff. It's like it's not that far off to just start fucking people in the ass. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. So close. So close. (laughs) Yeah, what's next? Uh, I completely derailed that entire conversation. Completely derailed us here. Like, what the heck? Um, (laughs) Since we brought it up a little bit earlier, SAO GGO, uh, Sword Art Online, Gun Gale Online. uh, Fuck yeah, we're back. I'm so hyped. I'm so hyped to see my cracked out Lully with their P90 running around again. It's great. Um, Bro, I just want to say, like, you say cracked out. I, I'm not entirely unconvinced she's not snorting a line right before she goes into these games. <laughs> and moving around like a crackhead. <laughs> yeah, moving like around like an actual fucking crackhead. Uh, the speed. Yeah, Agility I mean, build, let's go. <laughs> I always expect SAO to look good. Like I said, yeah. I the SAO is written poorly, but I, I love the action scenes. This new They're season looks really good well. so far. Yeah, honestly, I, I genuinely love Gun Gale uh, online so much. Just because I'm like, it's a bunch of cute girls have uh, doing fun shit with guns. Uh Like, that's fun. Bitches love cannons. Bitches do love cannons. <laughs> Um, no, I love the characters, I love the designs, and I'm just like, holy shit, I didn't realize how much of Gun Gale Online I've really missed until I started watching it. And I'm, at this point, I'm just hoping, um, for more Pitahui, uh, how are you saying, I'm bad at saying her, at saying her name. I'm looking forward to see if we actually get more figures of her because we barely got any uh, from the first time. All I know is I'm here for the action sequences. The story is super shallow. I don't care. I just want the cool action sequences with people running around with guns because it's cool. Okay. Just jangle those keys in front of me, man. I mean, if you want to watch like a really cool like action sequence fight stuff, man, let me tell you about thousand year blood war like <laughs> yo, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yo yo so we're finally getting into the parts of the uh manga that didn't air uh or not didn't air that weren't actually drawn they uh pretty much skipped a whole bunch uh out in the final couple of chapters and they're like let's go anime only written by kubo uh himself for this and it's so fucking cool. The visuals are top fucking tier. I mean, holy crap. They went all out. And I'm really glad they've broken it uh, down to separate cores, separate parts, uh, even for individual fights and individual sections. It's super damn cool. Now, uh, for, sounds amazing um, as well. Yeah, go on. For this arc of Thousand Year Blood War... Since it's anime only stuff, like, would you? Do I have to like watch the rest of Thousand Year Blood War to even know what the hell's happening? Like, is it connected to it at all, or is it just like? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's just like this is background stuff that was implied to happen, but we didn't get to actually read it in the manga, so we're actually getting to see it fleshed out. Yeah. Yeah. Th- okay. There was uh, some of it that was in the manga, but like this is really fleshed out. So like the only the only difference is it's anime only, but it is written by the creator of the manga, which is a yeah. little yeah, Kubo Tite. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All so, I like, know Kubo about... did write off on this because he wrote it. M- well, <laughs> right. most of the time when you see anime original stuff, it's not written by the creator of the manga or the source material. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I again, I haven't watched any 
thing of Thousand Year Blood War. I just watch compilations of fights. <laughs> no, yeah, it's... The, the, the action, the choreography of the action sequences is top notch. It's cool as shit. Um, I will say, like, you're an old school fan of Bleach. Like, this is Bleach at its final levels. It's so worth watching because it ramps it up to 11. Okay. Um, also, just the music in Thousand Year Blood War is just oh, it's so it, fucking it, good. It surpasses so the music. The music in Bleach has always original. been great, though. Yeah, but it, it's even better than the music in the original series. Okay. Which is actually saying something because, like, that's tinged with nostalgia, and that's a huge thing. Nostalgia ten uh, tinges not a small time factor. So to say, like, it's better, holy shit, it is actually better, though. I am bleeding. Oh. oh, could you? How did uh, you not? Did I a gator I attack again? No, no, I I scratched a pimple on my arm and it broke the oh, skin. Gross. Oh, good job. Uh, yeah, like I don't know for for me, like I I finished reading Bleach and I was just like, well, that should have ended at the Eisen arc. I hated all of that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I get it. I don't think I'm the only person of that opinion where like Bleach should have ended after the Eisen arc. It should not have stopped or started. No, after, I am of like, the that opinion that. as well. <laughs> um, so that's why I'm just like not hyped to watch Thousand Year Blood War or any or the rest of it because I was just like, look, I finished the manga. I don't really care about the rest of this. Then you like, started watching say, clips. <laughs> well, which is like the opposite you? of like Naruto, where once I finished reading the manga, I was like, okay, I got to watch the end. I got to finish shipping it now. <laughs> I, I, I would say for you, John, in particular, wait until this arc is completely finished, then go binge it. Because I think you'll appreciate it more that way. Yeah. I don't think it, that's something I can handle doing weekly anymore. Yeah, once, it's completed, once it's completed, I'll binge probably all Honestly, of it. Honestly, I'm kind of becoming that way with Shonen in general. Like, I just just let me let it get over and I'll binge it. <laughs> well, it's one thing if, like, the adaptation of a Shonen heavily increases the production value. Like, for yeah. example, uh, Demon Slayer. Like, the anime, because it's done by Ufotable, looks a lot better than the manga. A yeah. lot better. Like I would argue the same thing with Mappa and Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> yeah, like the main story is still the same, but because it's being fully animated and they do a bunch of uh, really cool fucking animations and the studios are putting a lot of effort into it, it's awesome to, to watch them in anime form. Uh, just because the story of Bleach is like kind of meh after the Eisen arc to me doesn't mean the anime doesn't look good. Like I said, I watched the compilation of the fights. It looks pretty fucking sick, but yeah. If all I care about is just like, oh man, I love these fight scenes. I don't want to see the rest where they're just fucking talking, bro. I just want to see the fights. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how I watch Sao. I don't care about the talking or the story. Just let me see the fights. <laughs> yeah, I'll get my enough, fix I mean, and then I'll leave. <laughs> fair enough. I'm gonna watch fucking thirty episodes, man. <laughs> yeah, I I will say so far uh, from just a purely technical perspective, Thousand Year Blood War is is great. Yeah, it's top of the line animation sound everything about it just amazing <sighs> i'm looking forward to seeing where it goes very much so it okay. already started out super strong <coughs> what's next oh, yeah. John, there's only well, two things left i so <laughs> studio dean may be saving anime after all fellas let me tell you what? about yakuza <laughs> yakuza fiance uh rase wa tanin ga e I I don't know how to pronounce that. I I E. Uh Yakuza Fiance, done by Studio Dean. Uh it's that one like rom com. It's not actually a rom com. It's more of a drama than a rom com, actually. And yeah, we okay. talked about, it's this about during our season preview. Yeah, I talked about this because I was like, it looks kind of interesting. It's about two people who are part of the Yakuza who have to get married to each other and live with each other, but they're in high school. And that's the premise. Now, when you two say grandkids of Yakuza, of Yakuza families mean... have to get married, okay. and it's okay. like, oh, I, it's like kind of young to be in the Yakuza if you're still in high school. But well, no, they're heirs. Like one of yeah, them is an heir to one of the Yakuza throne. Like they're descendants of people in the Yakuza. Yeah, they're the Yakuza people, and it's just like I watched the first episode, and I was like, it's kind of boring. <laughs> Not gonna lie, the art's kind of weird. Um, I really like the main character chick though. Uh. Because she's, you know, she's a badass. Like, she's the freaking granddaughter of a Yakuza boss. Like, no shit. 
Uh, and then the Yakuza guy, the Yakuza husband or whatever, he's kind of a dick. Uh, he's like a complete dick to her. And then she like, she just goes, you told me to go sold, sell my body. Then all right, fuck you then. So she disappears from school for like a week. And the dude thinks he's won because he's like, yeah, you fucking whore, like whatever. And she Shut comes me. back and is like, here's fucking four million. Shut the fuck up. She went and sold her kidney to prove a point to the dude. And I'm like, hey, yo, what? Now that this is bitch for life. real? This bitch is crazy. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I'm looking at the it, art style right now of this, like the character designs and everything are very like shoujo. Yeah, they're very old school shoujo. They, they look yeah. like Sailor Moon style. Yeah, they look like like late late 90s shoujo character designs. But so far, the story is pretty interesting. Um, I like the fact that both of the characters are, they're part of the Yakuza, so they're both fucking vicious. (laughs) And they both, like, don't give two fucks. It's like, you think you're so tough? I'm fucking tough, too. I like that. I don't know. It's pretty interesting so far. Uh, I thought there'd be more romance involved, but I haven't seen even like a drop of romance in this. (laughs) So after the, the girl comes back and shows like the guy up, he all of a sudden is now like heads over heels for her, which is like complete 180 from his attitude before. Cause he was bullying her and basically like, I'm going to turn you into a fucking, like, I'll make you sell your body and this and that. So it's just like, like what the fuck happened here? So that's weird. Outside of that though, uh, I just, I like the girl. She's the main character, so it's interesting. Um, right. Beats the shit out of some dudes at the club, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> like, takes a fork and stabs a dude in the eye, and I'm like, yep. Oh. Yeah. I love a woman that'll actually just kill me. I mean, <laughs> no, yeah, same. The, the guy does that. It's like, he, he's getting rough. Like, he goes into this room because they're trying to find this one chick who's part of a different Yakuza family that's trying to skip town. Because they they scammed a different mafia out of like half a billion dollars, <laughs> but then she calls in. She has like the security from this other group, so then they show up to rough up the main character guy. So he starts fighting them, but because they um they push down his wife or fiance, the the main character girl, and she starts bleeding. Dude goes absolutely ape shit and takes a fork and starts fucking stabbing people. <laughs> it's very violent. <laughs> It As you would expect like for a, a Yakuza uh, drama, thriller drama, you know? It's not yeah. much of a thriller as much as it is a drama. But I don't know. It's I think it's pretty interesting of a, a watch. It's not your stereotypical shonen. I'll say that much. Okay. And it doesn't look bad at all coming from Studio Deed, of all places. <laughs> of all places. All right, cool. Uh, Chinoda, okay, I guess then. you got the last one. All right, folks, we are back. Holy shit, Dragon Ball Daima. Uh, I am so happy. I'm not going to lie. I, I I started tearing up a little when it started playing. I was like, yo, Wait, yo, nostalgia. Wh- it? Chala, hit chala. <laughs> no, no, no. Egg- oh, okay. I did. <laughs> Bro, I would have actually cried. <laughs> <laughs> so, I remember we talked about this during the season preview, Dragon Ball Daimo, but we didn't know too much about it at uh, during the season preview, other than, like, there was a Dragon Ball project coming up. Yeah, very little that's had been knew. revealed before it was released. So, so what is Dragon Ball Daimo? Uh, TLDR, uh, huge lore dump, uh, first of all. Turns out Namekians actually are demons. That escaped what? from uh, the demon world. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's crazy. They're not uh, just aliens now. They're, they're no. De- what? They're they're demons that escaped from the demon realm. Oh, I mean, sure. Yeah. Uh, I but, mean, I, no. I I understand that Dragon Ball is supposed to be a like take on Journey to the West, you know, with Son Goku and everything like that. Oh, bro, we left that a long time ago. I that know. Was just so original. it's just like. That, that I mean, that's what it's, it was loosely based on with the whole monkey stuff. In the I wouldn't super, even say loosely. Yeah. The first story, Dragon Ball, I, like it was hardcore Journey to the West, but like then it kept on going, and, and obviously yeah. it had to change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but no, um, um, not that's just a side piece of lore. Like that, that was just dumped uh, randomly. Uh, no, the thing is, it's kind of like GT, where, um, 
the new king of the demon realm basically snuck on uh snuck on onto earth and with a namekian from the demon realm that he had by his side uh you know how the dragon balls after they get used they get turned into stones yeah yeah this guy found them by just like recalling them as stones and then turned them back into dragon balls like no waiting. It was what? so cool. Yeah. It was wild as shit. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Namekians have even more powers? Um, uh, so really cool like that. Um uh, and basically he turned uh everyone who turned uh who was a child uh, or sorry, everyone who fought Boo into a child. And anyone who uh, who was a child during that age, like a baby, so if it's interesting uh, what they did, it's kind of like GT, but like I think they're going a different route with it. So this takes place during after the boo fight, like during the boo yes. fight. Yes. Okay. No, after the boo fight. After At, the boo like, fight. Directly after the boo fight. Okay. Not directly after, like a little a little bit later. But yeah. Wait, what about the characters from like Super, like Beerus? This is and before. All this is this is before Beerus and all that. Yeah. Okay. So, interesting. Uh, very much keeping an eye on it because you know it's fucking Dragon Ball, and like I I, I just love to have it back. Um, and it seems like they're going the more fun and zany side of Dragon Ball again. I really hope so anyway. It's cool. Massive lore dumps and like cool shit happening. Hell yeah, I'm in. And the music was great. Animation was great, of course. Not too much else to say at the moment because only one episode is out. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, the season has been kind of like not terrible, I would say. I, I don't have any standouts yet, though, that I'm like, oh, absolutely, yeah. I need to watch. But I that's because, I like, mean, I, 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 I have a couple. for the wrong reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a couple that I know I'm just going to want to watch every week. I, yeah. I haven't talked about, like, I was MF Ghost and stuff, you know, like, yeah. Shangri-La Frontier. Like, if I watch it, I'm going to talk about it every week. I, I yeah, like those There's still ones. a bunch of stuff that I didn't <laughs> I do, even I, list. Yeah, there, there's still I, a bunch I do of stuff say, to talk about. I do want to say for the people who are wondering, yes, we do intend to do a spoiler cast for Uzumaki. Um, it is going to be our Halloween special. Uh, we plan to have that come out mon the ho Monday before Halloween. Um, I didn't really want to talk about it here. I have watched the first two episodes. Uh, we'll have way more to talk about with it during the, the actual spoiler cast, but oof. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel it's like it's looking at this rough. Point, every, I mean, it's, uh... Well, if I were to judge it by the first episode alone, I'd say, hmm, mm hmm. But after the second episode, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> who was it that posted that Berserk 2016 comparison? That was hilarious. I don't know who it was, but whoever they are, they're whoever did that. Because... Hilarious. Absolutely loved it. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's going to be a little bit of a rough spoiler cast, but we do intend to uh, do that for our Halloween special uh, this year, even though it doesn't look like it's going to be. Uh, as good as we hoped. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> Maybe the real scares were the episodes of Uzumaki that we made on the way. Yeah. <laughs> Ito, forever yeah, cursed. Anyway. Yeah. Junji Ito, forever cursed. Never to have a good anime adaptation of his work. I don't think but it's anyway, just Ito, though. I, I feel like it's... Horror anime, in general. Horror anime in general. I don't know why it just cannot succeed yeah. as a genre. And we'll... We'll we'll talk. We can talk about that during the Uzumaki spoiler cast a little bit too. I think um, it'll be a good excuse to to talk about why horror doesn't work in anime form, or it doesn't seem like it works very well in anime format. But uh, yeah, that's our monthly dump for uh, October. Thank you all out there for dropping in to watch us. Uh, do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, check down below where you can find links to all the stuff Anime Club After Dark does, as well as a link to our merch store if you want to buy Anime Club After Dark merch and support us that way. With all that being said, though, I have been your host, Alex, and I will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Good night. Bye.
Bye bye. Have a good one. You know, you could say, John, with the Uzumaki, it's a never ending spiral downward. <laughs> That was bad. It <laughs> was really bad. I'm so sorry. That was re- I'm I'm slipping. I really am. Anyway. <laughs>